Now, this past weekend, I did my unboxing and got my first look at the brand new ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 12, all new for 2024. And it's a tried and true laptop over the years, especially for the mobile professional. They need some, something thin and light, good display options, excellent keyboard, mobile broadband, you know the drill. So when I took delivery of it, I was very excited because there were a number of changes year over year between Gen 11 and Gen 12 that I thought were gonna make it even better. And I think for the most part, they do. We're gonna have a new redesigned keyboard here, although it's still an excellent ThinkPad keyboard. We have some changes that are notable. We also have a bigger, larger touchpad. And of course, we will be getting a haptic touchpad later this year, uh, probably the second half of the year with a central haptic touchpad. I look forward to checking that out. But we now have a new 120 millimeter glass touchpad. We have new display options, including 120 Hertz refresh rate and a 2.8K OLED display. So that's been working out really great. We also have an upgraded processor here, or so to speak upgraded processor. The new Meteor Lake is here, a 28 watt CPU. It's the Core Ultra 7 155H. Although we're seeing better efficiency, we're seeing decent battery life, especially with an OLED display. But does it fit the bill to be one of the best business focused thin and light laptops here for 2024? We're gonna find out today. Hey everybody, it's Andrew and this is the ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 12 all new for 2024 coming up now before we get to the unit itself i just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure i'm not being paid by lenovo i'm not being sponsored by lenovo all the opinions you're about to hear are my own lenovo is not getting copy approval that means you're seeing this video for the first time just like you now this unit is on loan from lenovo and once this review is done i'll be sending it back so without further ado let's get this out of the box Let's see what power charger we get here. It is 65 watt, no surprise there. So look how compact that is. You gotta love that. So pretty compact, USB type C of course. It's got your power cord right there. So pretty typical stuff here. And then of course we get the unit itself. Usual documentation and stuff, uh, warranty information, typical stuff. And once again, she is a beauty. I love this just classic look here. So it has the ThinkPad X1 logo on here, on the lid here. It's pretty nice and you got your logo uh, Lenovo branding there. Now you got the communication bar up here, that little lip, as you can see there. That's gonna house the IR webcam and so forth. And really looks good here. With just the unit alone, we're looking at 1.099 kilograms, so that's pretty light actually. 1.099 kilograms, just a shade below 1.1, and for those wondering, that is two pounds, 6.8 ounces, pretty light. Power cord and the power charger, you're now looking at 1.368 kilograms, and a total travel weight of three pounds, 0 0.3 ounces, so there you go, pretty light. Last year's model, with the touch display on that full HD plus. So this one is 1.185. So just a shade under 1.1 kilogram on the Gen 12. And you're looking at 1.185 kilograms, which is two pounds, 9.8 ounces. Now the port placement is different year over year between Gen 11 and Gen 12. On the left side here in Gen 12 is a USB-A port, two USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 ports that are full function, and the SIM tray for the optional mobile broadband. Now moving over to the right side, you get your power button, you get your 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack, another USB-A port, an HDMI 2.1 port, and finally a Kensington lock port to round it out here on Gen 12. Now when you take a look at Gen 12, and Gen 11 year over year, you see that they move the HDMI is on the opposite side now. You also have the SIM tray for the optional mobile broadband on the opposite side. So different placement here altogether. Now to get inside this laptop, once again, it's super easy. There are four captive Phillips set screws. Loosen them and pop off the bottom plate with a guitar pick, pry tool, or with your fingers as I did. Not an issue, very easy once again. 
Now my review unit has 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5X RAM running at 6400 megahertz and it is running in dual channel mode. Now again, it is soldered in so as the user you cannot upgrade it yourself, but I like the option of 32 gigabytes of RAM on a 14 inch portable thin and light laptop as we have here. Now when it comes to the SSD that is user upgradable, my review unit has one terabyte of SSD storage and as you can see from these reads and writes, excellent here for 2024, certainly fast enough for what you need this laptop to do. Now, when it comes to wireless, you're looking at a Wi-Fi 6E Bluetooth 5.3 combo card that is soldered into the motherboard, not slotted in. So that, unfortunately, is not user upgradable. And I would have liked to have seen Wi-Fi 7 on this, not Wi-Fi 6E. Of course, Wi-Fi 7 will be a little bit more future-proof. So that's something interesting to watch later for this year. Maybe they'll upgrade it. But right now, you're going to get it only with Wi-Fi 6E, although it is fine for most people. Now, there is the optional mobile broadband. You can go with the 5G option here and if you do so there is that SIM card slot on the unit as I showed you earlier so it's great for the mobile road warrior who needs that always on secure connection on the go. Okay, let's talk about the display, and it's a good one. It's a 14-inch 2.8K OLED or OLED display. That's 2880 by 1800. And yes, for those wondering, that is a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. It's got an anti-reflective coating on it. It's also anti-smudge, anti-glare. And it's got some really great coverage of the color gamut here. Good color accuracy, great black level since it is OLED, great contrast, of course. And the colors just seem to pop and really shine here. I like what they're doing and of course it's not a glossy display so that's a bonus to me especially when you want to get work done the bezels are relatively small here and i think it's really good although i noticed the pwm if you go below 50 percent screen brightness on this so for those sensitive to screen flickering that might be an issue for you wasn't much for me now here it is shown with that hdr it's an hdr true black 500 display with a peak brightness of 500 nits when you're watching standard dynamic range you're going to get about 400 nits of brightness i think i measured three nights or 399 so really good in that regard and especially the fact that it's not a glossy display certainly benefits this so you won't have that issue of outdoor use you'll be able to see it it worked out okay now, a couple of things to note here. This is the non-touch version, but there is a touch version of this 2.8K OLED display, and there's no 4K plus or UHD plus resolution option as last year. You don't get it this year either, so just keep that in mind. And I think that's a good decision overall, especially when you want to make sure you get the most battery life out of this. And if you want that extra battery, I think going with the full HD plus might be better for you, although the battery wasn't bad for an OLED display, as you will see. So this is the camera on the brand new Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 12 here for 2024. You're looking at 1080p video here, 30 frames per second. This is an IR camera. That means you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. What do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio? Let me know. Now there is a shutter switch. Uh, right next to the camera, as you see on the top by that lip, that will allow you to turn off the camera for more security and privacy. And there's also the AI effects or the studio effects, thanks to the NPU here. Although I didn't notice the NPU doing anything in the background when I was doing the live stream. Well, we'll look into that more soon. But this is the auto framing, and it seems to work as well as to be expected. So it'll follow you. You can move around, and yes, here it goes. Uh, you also have the eye contact. And you also have the background blur effects. So uh, reasonably well. What do you think about the video? What do you think about the audio? Again, let me know in the comments section below. Okay, let's talk about the performance. And this is running the brand new Meteor Lake processor, the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H, a 28-watt CPU with the Intel Arc graphics. That's an integrated solution. It's a nice step up over the previous iteration, which was the Iris Xe. So we're doing a lot better here with the Arc graphics. Now, when it comes to single and multi-core performance, you're going to see good performance, not great. It's not a speed demon. And I don't think this was designed to be a, a laptop that you're going to play AAA titles on. It's it's not a laptop to do very complicated 4K renders in DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro. This is designed to do Microsoft Office, email, web browsing on the go in a thin and light laptop with good battery life that runs cool and quiet. Now, when it comes to Cinebench 2024, CPU single core performance, it did okay. It, it matches up pretty much with the other Meteor Lake laptops, maybe a little bit less, as I mentioned. And when it comes to the multi-core performance, it didn't do quite as well as the other Meteor Lake laptops 
laptops, in particular the HP Spectre X360 14, two-in-one convertible, one of my favorites here for 2024. This did less performance multi-core wise. Now, where you're going to see a nice improvement year over year is in the 3D Mark Time Spy and Firestrike score. I saw a 115% increased performance in the Time Spy score and a nice healthy 63% increase in performance in the Firestrike score. What does that mean? It means if you play with some of the settings, if you lower some of the settings, you can get certainly playable frame rates on some of the popular titles, but don't expect to play AAA titles on the highest settings. For instance, Cyberpunk 2077, it really was not doable on this. And again, not a gaming laptop, not meant for this. So just keep your expectations in check. But for what it, it is designed to do, it does it very well. Now, I wanted to really put it into real world usage in terms of video editing in a very simple 4K video. Here is DaVinci Resolve, and as you can see, scrubbing through the timeline wasn't an issue, seemed pretty smooth, no lag, no delay, that's good. So when I rendered that three minute 4K video, it's 30 frames per second, it did a pretty good job rendering it in two minutes and two seconds. That's a really good time, much better than what we would see with Iris XE. So we're definitely seeing a step up in terms of that integrated graph solution with this Intel Arc graphics. Now, last year when I ran the Time Spy stress test to see if it was thermal throttle, Gen 11 scored 77.1%, meaning it detected some throttling when put under heavy load. When I ran the same test on the Gen 12 here for 2024, it didn't pass either, but it did a little bit better at 82.2%, meaning it detected some thermal throttling, but not quite as much as last year. So it's a little bit of an improvement. But the benefit, of course, is not overly hot in terms of the surface temperatures. When it's put under heavy load, it would relatively cool although i noticed about 45 46 degrees maybe 47 by the track point area but other than that i didn't see it overly hot i did notice about 55 56 maybe 57 degrees above the keyboard below the display where the heat dissipates so not too unexpected there but where you put your fingers or where you place it on your lap it's not going to be overly hot the underside didn't get very hot either so good news when it comes to the surface temperatures and great news when it comes to the fan noise, never going above 35, 36 decibels. So that means it stays relatively cool and quiet under load. And that's what you want on a thin and light laptop meant to be taken on the road. Now, when it comes to the battery life, this has the same 57 watt hour battery as it did last year in Gen 11. The difference is I had the full HD plus IPS touch display last year that maxed out at 60 Hertz. This is that 2.8 K OLED display, which goes up to 120 Hertz. And that's how I ran the battery test with the 120 Hertz enabled. And it still managed nine hours and 58 minutes on the PC Mark 10 modern office test. And on the video playback test, it did nine hours and 33 minutes minutes. These are respectable numbers considering you have that high res 2.8K OLED display. Now, you'll do better if you go with the Full HD Plus and run it at 60 hertz. There's no doubt about it. You'll get a few more hours in terms of the endurance. Now, before we get to the keyboard, there are some changes year over year between Gen 11 and Gen 12. The control and function keys have been switched. The control key is now on the outside. The function key is now on the inside, as you see there. The power button has now been moved to the side of the unit, and the fingerprint scanner is now located within the keyboard deck. And they added tactile markings added for improved accessibility. Now, I know a lot of the comments in the live unboxing had to do with the switching of the control and the function keys. And at first, it was a little bit jarring. I had to get acclimated to the fact that they have been switched, but it didn't take me long to get adjusted to it, and I don't really mind it. So that's just one of the things that they changed here in 2024. Now, for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger and the screen goes back 180 degrees. So, of course, you'll always get the perfect viewing angle each and every time. And I noticed very little, if any, screen wobble when typing. So the hinges are on really well. And one of my favorite aspects of the X1 Carbon line is its legendary keyboard. Now, I really do love it. It really is great for typing out long documents, emails, and the like. The tactility, the feedback, and the key travel is all there, in my opinion, as being one of the best in terms of an ultralight portable here for 2024. And I got to tell you, it's been a pleasure using it since I've unboxed it. 
and it now has a larger 120 millimeter glass touchpad that worked really well when it comes to scrolling, doing all the gestures. Everything was very fluid, very responsive. Now, later this year, they will be debuting one with the Sensil Haptic Force Pad or Touchpad. That is going to be a really welcome addition. I can't wait to check that out. But right now, with this regular type touchpad, which is really good, uh, certainly did the job here. There's no doubt about it. And of course, this wouldn't be a ThinkPad without the track point. It's here and it worked well. When you need it, it's there. I don't really use it all that much, to be honest, but you know, it's part of the ThinkPad DNA. I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. And just like other ThinkPads as of late, when you double tap the track point, it brings up a menu, allowing you to change different settings, part of which allows you to do voice typing and the like. Uh, I like that. It's pretty convenient and it works pretty well. Now, when it comes to the audio, the speakers are now hidden behind the keyboard with this unique design that supposedly allows the audio to pass through with clarity. Although when I compared it to Gen 11, which didn't have this system, it wasn't quite as clear. I think being under the keyboard makes it a little bit muddled. Now, having said that, it didn't sound bad in any way. It was certainly usable and it sounded OK, but it just didn't sound as clear as with having speakers that are not hidden under the keyboard. That's just my opinion. But I want to know what you think. Let me know. Now, let's give it a listen. I'll compare it to Gen 11 here, so you be the judge. You let me know what you think in the comment section below. Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 12 here for 2024? There's a lot to like here, although it is not perfect. There are some nice improvements year over year. I like its 2.8K OLED display that now is 120 hertz refresh rate. That's a nice option. Meteor Lake processor is a nice upgrade, although it might be overkill for this type of thin and light portable design. And that means it will run cool and quiet, but you won't get that speed demon performance. So that's been what the situation is. Excellent keyboard. Keyboard. Once again, it's a ThinkPad keyboard, larger 120 millimeter glass touchpad, although Sensil is making a force pad for it later this year. Looking forward to trying that out. Tactile markings for improved accessibility on that keyboard, and it has the optional mobile broadband for the Rode Warrior who needs that always on secure connection. What's not so great? Well, still no 4K plus option as in last year. We didn't have it. We don't have it this year. Soldered RAM means the user cannot upgrade it themselves. It still collects fingerprints, although not as bad. The oleophobic code has been pretty decent, but it still shows some fingerprints after some use. And it's expensive out of the gate, although we know Lenovo tends to run aggressive sales, so make sure you check the link for the latest pricing. And it still throttles under heavy load, which of course is to be expected in this type of device, thin and light chassis, but you do get pretty good battery life out of it overall. So I think the overall takeaway is this is an excellent choice for the mobile professional that needs that always on secure connection of a mobile broadband, who needs that excellent keyboard to get work done on the road and have an excellent display to get that work done on. This certainly checks all the boxes. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. 
Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and X, the platform formerly known as Twitter. And don't forget to check out my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next video.